today's story is called The Exciting News. I hate to drop a major story spoiler here at the start of today's lesson, but we might as well get it out of the way. Remember when Jesus died on the cross in last week's lesson? Jesus didn't stay dead. Three days later, he rose from the grave. Jesus is alive and death and sin have been defeated. For the last four weeks, we've been working our way through the Easter story with the help of some eggs. Each egg had a different piece of the story. We found a donkey who represented Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. We found a coin for Judas' betrayal. A cup reminded us of the Last Supper. Praying hands took us to the Garden of Gethsemane. A rooster reminded us of when Peter denied Jesus. A whip, a crown of thorns, a cross, and a spear told the story of how Jesus was humiliated and then put to death. Today we come to the end of the story. Her first two eggs follow Jesus from the cross to the tomb. One has a piece of cloth in it, the other a small stone. Let's read the story in Matthew 27, verse 57 to 66. As evening approached, Joseph, a rich man from Arimathea, who had become a follower of Jesus, went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. And Pilate issued an order to release it to him. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a long sheet of clean linen cloth. He placed it in his own new tomb, which had been carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a great stone across the entrance and left. Both Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting across from the tomb and watching. The Guard at the Tomb The next day, on the Sabbath, the leading priests and Pharisees went to see Pilate. They told him, Sir, we remember what that deceiver once said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body, and then telling everyone he was raised from the dead. If that happens, we'll be worse off than we were at first. Pilate replied, Take guards and secure it the best you can. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect it. Jesus' followers, the few that were left, took his body off the cross. They wrapped his body, which was the way they prepared people for burial in that time, and they laid him in a burrowed tomb, like a cave. Once Jesus was in the tomb, they rolled a large stone in front of the entrance. No one could get in. No one was getting out. The stone was sealed, and two guards were posted outside the tomb, just to make sure there was no funny business. Then on Sunday morning, a friend of Jesus named Mary Magdalene went to the tomb with some other ladies to finish the anointing of Jesus' body for burial. The cloth was still there. The stone had been rolled away. But the tomb? The tomb was empty. Let's read Matthew 28, verse 1 to 10. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid. He said, I know you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Jesus came in peace. He came to save us from our sins. He obeyed his heavenly Father, and he did what had to be done in order to set us free. Jesus gave his life for us so that we could have eternal life with him. 
The empty egg may seem like a disappointment at first. After all, what good is an egg without something inside? But the absence of anything in the egg is the best part of Easter story. As the angel said, he is not here. He is risen. Jesus is alive and he wants to give you a new life. The Bible tells us that we are all sinners. We have all done things in rebellion against God. We have been sinners since the day we were born. And no matter how hard we try, we will never shake our sinful nature on earth. The Bible tells us that the punishment for sin is death. Jesus knew the only way to save us was if he took our place and died for us. As we learned last week, his death paid the price for sin once and for all. Jesus died for every man and woman and child who ever lived. He died for you and me. If we confess that Jesus is Christ and if we accept him as our savior, Jesus will forgive our sins. He will give us new life on earth and eternal life in heaven. The last egg is empty. So is the tomb. Jesus is alive and he wants to be your savior. Will you accept Jesus today? Will you begin your new life? Jesus loves you and there is nothing he wants more for you than to accept his love today. Let's pray. God, thank you that I can know that Jesus is alive. I accept your love for me today. In Jesus' name, amen.